All right, it's been a long time since I've done an update with uh, Raster Master, so I want to go over uh, all the features uh, again, just to remind everybody uh, some of the things that I'm implementing, but not documenting very well. So first, let me just get rid of myself from the screen. So that way we can show everything. Okay. All right, so current version is uh, 1.4 R78. Uh, R stands for release. So there's been 78 releases. And I bump up the version number when there's a major feature. Uh, if I do a bunch of minor features, eventually I'll bump that up as well. But um, usually if there's a major feature, I bump it up to point whatever. So next major version will be 1.5. And uh, so this is where you see the current version. And if you click here, it takes you to, to the YouTube channel and you could subscribe there. And as well, if you click here, it'll also take you to the YouTube channel. Anyway, so let's go over uh, all the settings here. So you can run it in uh, full screen mode or in a windowed mode. It really doesn't matter. It works just as well. Uh, some of you may have noticed these uh, blue bars, but don't know actually what they do. You can resize uh, the whole window area. So I created a few images just to illustrate what happens. So we do this. We could actually have more images if we're going back and forth with a lot of images. And so you can choose between different images much easier. And uh, there's a few other things. Uh, the palette editor uh, is not all that visible, but if you click here, we get the uh, palette editor. So you could actually change the colors. I'm not sure if many of you have discovered this yet, but uh, it's here. And also if we go into palette and select edit colors, it brings the same palette editor and this ranges uh, you'll get a different palette depending on the palette mode you're in I'll go over palettes later uh, and we also have the uh, zoom here uh, so you may notice that by default it's uh, 256 by 256 uh, pixels and we can change the uh, the size of the zoom here and we could get rid of the uh, grid. And for some images, it looks better if we don't have the grid on. So it's up to you. And we can resize. So normally you want to choose what best size you're working with. So if you're working with uh, 32 by 32 sprites or tiles, it's best to use that because it actually makes things uh, much faster. So when you're uh, increasing the zoom size, the smaller the image, the faster it hap uh, the faster it uh, resizes it. So everything is almost instantly when you're using the uh, 32 by 32 or 64 by 64. As you get to 128 and 256 it starts slowing down a bit. So if you notice that uh, it's not responding as quickly, just change the size. Now, the other thing um, some of you might not be aware of is uh, exporting. Um, so you, you can easily export to your favorite compiler and it'll create some code and here's some options here. But what happens if you want to export all these images here? Uh, you can do this by right-clicking and clicking on properties here. And you can select the uh, the compiler. Let's go with Turbo Pascal and choose put image format, mask, sure. So if you do this for each one, let's just do two. Now if you go to export and select REST text include file, it'll export those two images uh, all at once in one file rather than doing each one separately. So if you've been doing this separately, you can save a lot of time just by right clicking and selecting on the properties 
and doing the full export to res text include. Now what you might notice is that there's a lot more uh, supported compilers here. The most recent is the uh, open Whatcom. So that allows you to create 16-bit uh, and 32-bit uh, DOS programs. So uh, the built-in uh, graphics library supports that. So uh, even the mouse shape is now supported. I'm not going to go through the, uh, a lot of the code, but if you check the demos or the examples folder on GitHub, you'll see how to actually use all these different formats. So let me go over uh, saving. Uh, you can save all these images rather than instead of saving one by one, save it as a project. So when you save as a project, it has the RMP extension. So it'll save all the images, all the palettes, all in one file. And that way you don't have to individually save each, each file. Now, if you do want to save files individually, there's a few formats. That the default format is BMP, which is the uh, Windows bitmap format. And the reason for that, because we have an index-based palette here, and this is the best way to preserve the palette and all the pixels. Uh, you can save in ping, um, and that works. Uh, it, there's no problem uh, with saving as ping. It's only when you reload the ping file that you lose the original uh, palette. It'll recreate the palette with the colors used in the actual file. So if you want to preserve the palette all the time, save in, in, in uh, BMP format and save in ping when you want to save uh, as a final image. Uh, PCX uh, and Is, is meant for uh, mostly DOS uh, libraries or uh, development tools. Uh, it works just as well as uh, BMP. It'll preserve the palette uh, files as well. And we have uh, Amiga formats here. We have LBM format and BBM. LBM uses compression. Uh, BBM does not. BBM is the brush. So if, uh, if you're trying to load this in, let's say, uh, Amiga basic program, it might be best to use the brush because it's less complicated. And we also have uh, GIF or GIF for some of you who like to pronounce it differently. And uh, again, this is meant for DOS, but you can use this in, in other uh, development tools as also. Uh, there's no benefit from Windows BMP and, and uh, PCX format, except for that it, it creates much smaller files. So if you're concerned about file size uh, in older development tools, then GIF is the uh, format. RAW is uh, a very simple format. Everything is represented uh, by the uh, pixel color. Uh, I documented this. Uh, you can check this uh, on the wiki. So this allows you to save in RAW format and easily import to any programming language or tool that you want to use to convert even further. So that's all the save formats. But we also have uh, options for cutting and pasting uh, between different programs. So the uh, built-in uh, paste here uh, works a little differently than you'd expect. So let's just uh, go through this. Um, and I'll show you what I mean. So you might want to use other programs. So I'm just using uh, paint here. And I'll just use, uh, let's create a nice little arrow. So it's nice that uh, paint could create all these uh, different shapes for us really easily. Let's create a little heart. OK. Now let's uh, let's just copy this, and if we come back here, I'll select new, and uh, so we're using the uh, 256 color palette here, and if we uh, do paste, it will paste it. Obviously, it's not big enough. Let's uh, resize to. 
128 and let's try pasting it again and there we go we got the uh, full heart this time now with doing this uh, what you don't realize is doing color remapping based on your current palette so all the colors here it tries to find the best matching color in your current palette so when you're pasting uh, between different programs it's the palette that you have here that's trying to match up all the colors from a different program you've uh, cut from so let's uh, let's try this with a, another program with the more complicated images so I'm using graphics 2 here and um, you could generate these these kinds of images let me show you right, let's do one There we go. So we just created that, uh, and there's color cycling. So if we turn on color cycling, uh, yeah. All right. So that's color cycling, but I just wanted to demonstrate the. Uh, various different colors we could get here. So I'm going to clip this and uh, cutting and pasting from graphics 2 is a little different. So let's uh, let's cut. All right, now let's uh, save to the clipboard. And let's come back here. So I'm going to paste the uh, in the current palette as well again and it does a pretty good job of matching but if we look carefully it's not exact so it's close but not exactly so there's a way of getting all the colors so let's uh, go to new palette Sorry, new image. And um, let's go to utilities, sprite import. And if we do import from clipboard, we see uh, the image. And what we do here is that we can select new palette from entire image or new palette from the clip area. In this case, it'll be the same because that's all we have, but let's do entire image. And what this will do now is instead of using the current palette, it will create a new palette. So we're importing the same image as before, but this time with a new palette. And actually, we actually made it worse because I didn't select the, six, uh, the uh, 256 color. I selected only 16 colors. Let's go back and do xga palette 256 and let's try that again and this time we get exactly the uh, colors we're expecting here so if we look uh, at the different options so if we do a 16 color import it does a pretty good job it gets pretty close but uh, not exactly so that's uh, how you cut and paste uh, from different programs and uh, how to create a new palette based from your your clipped image or your cut image. So that's not something I've documented. Hopefully it will help some people. Um, let's go also into properties here. So when you're saving uh, PNG files, there's no easy way to uh, select from the uh, tool area the uh, the transparent color or um, the other various uh, uh, properties. Uh, but what we can do here is uh, we can choose uh, an index color uh, and let's uh, let's show how you get the index color. So when you hover over an image here, let me make this bigger. Right here, you'll see where it says color index. So if we uh, check over here, this is this yellow is color index 13. So let's say we wanted to make that a transparent color. Come back here and we check this and make it 13. Um, by default, we could also make fuchsia a transparent color. 
this on some sprite sheets, uh, this comes with the future color as a transparent color, so it's an easy way of uh, supporting that. And we could also do custom here. So we could specify the RGB uh, properties, and then we select the uh, alpha mode, uh, alpha level, which uh, anywhere from 0 to 255. So we can choose something in between if we want, want it to be kind of half transparent. So that's how you use that. And the map editor. So this is still fairly incomplete, but again, just like the, the main editor, you can you can move these things around. You're not stuck with uh, the default size. So right now it's basically a very simple map, but uh, it's still usable uh, for very simple RPG game or um, something else. Uh, if you're creative, but I plan to add more features here uh, so we can draw actual lines and boxes and generate a whole scene basically with a, a few more commands. So besides draw and erase, I will add more more features just like the these tools here. We'll, we'll have them in the uh, map editor basically. And if you're working with a a format that's not supported, uh, you could write your own uh, script and you could save or load or manipulate the uh, the image that's on the screen uh, using the built-in script support. Uh, this is all Pascal based, but uh, it's not that hard. Uh, I have an example you could take a look at. Now, one thing uh, I'd like to point out is that even though this is an actual editor, I don't expect many of you to actually sit down and create full images with this editor. What I expect most people will do is use uh, the import utilities. Uh, so let's say Sprite import. Uh, there's already a, a lot of nicely drawn asset packs, clip art out there that you can use. So let me show you how to use this uh, import Sprite sheet. And we have uh, a tile map. This is one of the uh, Kenny Dungeon uh, tile map. So just like before, um, let's choose uh, 16 by 60. I'm going to import a whole bunch of uh, images here. And let's choose, yeah, let's leave it here. So th this should allow us to uh, import these guys really quickly and uh, I plan to make this even easier in the future by allowing us to select a whole bunch of these images maybe all at once by you either uh, having a pre-configured uh, grid size or some other selection mode but this is fairly quick and if we go back to our editor now we can see that all these images have been imported in nicely. Now, what you can do now is, uh, so if you're creating some kind of retro game, you could easily export these to whatever compiler. You're using Amiga, you could export these to Amiga bitmap arrays for C, Pascal, and for basic, it'll create uh, data statements that you can read in. And in addition to uh, the image, you could also export the, uh, the palette. So you could export it either as uh, data statements or palette commands for all the supported uh, compilers. Uh, again, there's uh, demo programs or example programs that show you how to do that. I'm not gonna go into that right now, but uh, I think this covers uh, most of it here. Uh, See, I've gone through all the tools. Yeah, I think that's it. Uh, so I will be adding more features in the future, but for now, um, 
this is how it is and uh, hopefully you give it a try. I know some of you might have tried it at first and couldn't figure some things out. Hopefully this makes things a little clearer. Um, you can resize these at any, any time. So th I think this is one of the things a lot of people may miss. And you could also, when you're exporting, you can actually create a custom size here. So you can, even if it's 32 by 32 and you only want to save, let's say 16 by 60, if you put the value here, it'll accept this value. It'll overwrite the default uh, tile area. All right, so I think this is where I will end it. Uh, hopefully in the next update I do, there's a lot more interesting features.